is tut. Hello everybody and welcome back to TipTart and today we are starting an incredible journey. This is the prelude to a motion graphics icon series which is going to be going up on the channel over the next couple of weeks. Um, but before we get into animating these icons I thought I'd take the time to show you how to draw them in the first place just for those who aren't particularly familiar with Illustrator or After Effects or those sorts of things. So without any further ado let's dive right in. You can see that they're basically flat design icons um, but the running theme is that the colours in these have been offset slightly gives them a little bit more character and a little bit more vibrancy. Um, so I'm going to take you through them one by one and quickly show you how these were put together. It's all very simple stuff, so if you're fairly familiar with Illustrator you'll be fine. If not, I do recommend my intro to Illustrator series, um, which will be in the playlists on the channel um, to get you guys started. But otherwise, let's just dive right in. First thing I'm going to do is move all these off of the canvas and start again. Okay, so I'm going to grab my camera and duplicate that down here. Now, this is all really simple. Um, it's single line, single thickness, just to keep it nice and flat and easy looking. Um, I've got my color palette here, and we're just going to dive right into that. So first thing you need to do, obviously, to replicate this camera is to grab the rectangle tool. And one of the important settings you're going to need to do, you might as well do straight away, is go over to the stroke in your properties panel and change the caps and corners to both round. That way you get these nice round corners um, on everything you'll draw from now on with the rectangle tool. Okay. Now, because I've already got this shape, what I can do is I can hit I for eyedropper, hover over this stroke here, this path, and click it. And that basically copies across any of the settings that were previously set. However, uh, these may vary slightly based on the ones that you're doing. Um, but the ones that I've got set up here are a four pixel um, thick line with curved corners and caps. Uh, nice and simple. As long as you maintain that throughout your designs, everything should look very similar. Okay, so first thing to do is give it a rough rectangular shape like so and that's the way we're starting with the body now we're going to do all the line work first and we'll copy the colors across later and I'll show you why because it basically makes things a lot easier the next thing to do then is to create this little trapezoid on the top of the camera to bring that out now I found the best thing to do is actually to create another rectangle in the rough shape that you want it to be in like so and then come up to your um, direct selection tool shortcut a uh, and select the top left corner of that then you can just use your arrow keys to um, shift that point along specifically, maybe say five pixels, uh, maybe just three, five might be a bit too much. Do the same thing on the right hand side and you've got a perfectly equal trapezoid which can act as the top of the camera. Now the next step is to merge these two shapes together, so select both of those and if you're using Creative Cloud you should get the um, properties panel come up with the Pathfinder options down here. If you're not you can just go to Window Pathfinder and you'll get this window here. You can click Merge in there and that merges those two shapes together. Okay. If you're not perfectly happy with the way this viewfinder looks you can just grab some of the points with the direct selection tool and shift them around until you're a bit happier with them. Like so, I think I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, then it's just simply a case of drawing the rest of the shapes. We're going to need a shutter button here. We're going to need a flash or what represents a flash over here. And to make sure this is perfectly even, I'm going to line up one of its corners with the corners of the body above it and then move it along with shift left, shift down, and then position it equally so that I know it's perfectly aligned. Okay. Um, the next step then is to draw the line down here. The simplest way to do that is to grab the line tool, believe it or not. And as you can see, I've got these things which are snapping to different points around my art, my artwork. And those are called smart guides. Um, and if you haven't got those turned on, you can just go up to view and smart guides or hit the shortcut control U. Um, and that basically allows all of this snapping so you know you're centered to objects or on the line or things like that. Uh, it just makes your life a little bit easier. So I'm just going to drag a line down here like so. However, because this was the line segment tool and not the rectangle tool, um, it doesn't have the round caps that we previously set. So we just need to go through and select those again. The last step then is the circle. So I'm just going to go over here to the ellipse tool by holding down on rectangle and finding roughly the center of my camera. I'm going to start to click and drag, but before I let go, I'm going to hold Alt and Shift. And what this does is it, A, Shift makes it a perfect circle and Alt makes it grow from the center point of where I've selected. Now to illustrate that, if I just click and drag, the circle grows in whichever direction I'm pulling it. If I click and drag whilst holding Alt, it snaps to the center, okay? But I can still affect the shape. If I click and drag holding Alt and Shift, it makes a perfect circle dragging from the center, which is exactly what we want. So I'm gonna go to the center of my camera again. I'm gonna Alt Shift until I get a circle that I'm happy with. And then I'm going to let go. 
And now we're pretty much done with all the lines of our camera. We don't need any more. The only thing left is to do the color that is behind it. Uh, I am just going to make that slightly smaller though, like so. Okay, perfect. The next step then is to make these colors behind. And this is why we did all of the shapes first, because all we need to do now is copy this with control C and hit F to paste that in place. Okay, now it doesn't look like anything's happened, but of course all we've done is copied and pasted a shape on top of the current one. The next thing to do is head down over to your fill and stroke and you swap them using these two little arrows down here and that will turn your stroke into the fill. From there you can choose whatever colour you want. Obviously I'm going to choose uh, this green colour, see if I can find the one that matches it. Um, that one, like so. And then you just simply off offset it using your directional keys. Shift right, shift down, probably a bit too far, so one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Again, equal offsets, make sure it looks good and evenly weighted. Uh, and then you can just hit control, open square bracket, and that pushes it down through all the shapes until you know it's on the bottom. You can see there, like so. The next thing to do then <clears throat> is to um, fill in this circle in the middle to make it white. You can do that on the same shape or you can do the same thing. Control C, Control F, um, swap these around, give it a white fill and push it below. Uh, it's up to you, it depends how you're going to be bringing these into After Effects. Um, really that's all there is to it, the rest of these are very similar. So what I'm going to do is just blast through them one by one uh, and show you guys how quickly and easy it is to do these sort of things uh, when you know what you're doing essentially. So draw a new rectangle for this photograph, like so. And it's basically just a combination of um, using the Pathfinder tool, the Line tool, the Pen tool, uh, to draw the shapes that you want and then offsetting the colors at the ends. If I do this one slightly differently, for example, let's have the high mountain on this end, going down to the low one over here, like so, making sure those things intersect. Now to get this shape here, the best thing to do is to follow the lines of the previous rectangle first, like so. So hover over until you get the anchor points and just click on those until you get to the position where you're ready to draw the mountains, like so. And then just make sure you end up back intersecting on that path and down there to the other anchor. You haven't drawn anything extra because um, all your points are lining up. But when you move this aside and turn it into the colors later, um, it makes your life a little bit easier. Just we'll make sure that that's lined up perfectly because I can see there that it's not. I'm just going to grab this anchor point here and shift it into position. OK, perfect. Uh, we're going to need a sun then. So we'll just go to our ellipse tool, alt shift and click and drag to make our sun the right color. Mountains look a little bit high, so I'm just gonna select the whole thing, then go back to the direct selection tool and individually click and hold shift and click and hold shift until I get all the points of the mountains. And then I'm just gonna shift them down a little bit, like so, okay? I'm gonna take that sun, make it a little bit bigger and change the color of that as well. Oops, I think I accidentally, there we go. Change the color of that to um, yellow. Makes the most sense. <laughs> uh, then the last thing to draw is our two little sections here, which are just uh, wind or clouds, however you want to see them. Um, and the best way to do that is either with the pen tool or the line segment tool. It's completely up to you. Again, each time you use a new tool, you are going to have to go through and set the default stroke caps, um, which is the only issue, if you want to call it that. Um, I'm just going to instead press these, press I, and select them, and it will copy the different shapes, uh, properties, like so, much easier. Brilliant. Last thing to do then, grab both your sun and your mountains, copy and paste in place with so Control C and Control F, and then just swap those fills around. So with your sun, you swap that around and change the color. You can then push it underneath. Oops, I've accidentally left that on the stroke there. So what we can do is remove that stroke and change the fill. Push that underneath your sun and offset about four pixels. Whatever you do, just make sure each offset is the same um, in each of your drawings you do, otherwise the scaling is gonna look a bit different, okay? So select your mountains, do the same thing. Swap those colors around. Um, choose a mountain color, like so, and push it underneath the picture. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. As you can see, these things are really, really easy. Um, I'm not going to go through the rest because you should be able to figure out most of them yourselves. Um, what I will do, however, is if you want, I will put this Simple Icons Illustrator file up on my website. You can download that from the description below. 
uh, and you can just come in here and have a look and play around with these and see what I did with them. Um, but all of these are made with the exact same process, um, just simple line work, color work in the background, swapping out and use of the Pathfinder tool. Um, it really is as simple as that. Illustrator is a great program to work with for simplicity. So thanks very much for watching, everybody. Do stick with this series because next episode we're going to be animating these um, and we're going to go through one by one and animate each and every single one of them. So I hope you enjoy it. Hope you get through to the end. Let me know if you do and make sure to share the work that you do create on um, our Discord channel, things like that. And hopefully I'll see you all next time when we start to animate these simple icons. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks and tutorials. Thanks for watching.